My name is Stephen Silverbeard and welcome to this new uh, ca grand campaign for Total War Attila. Now, I've been looking for a replacement for the Abbas campaign which came is now effectively come to the end. In fact, the last part will be published before I put up this. So, there might, uh, if there's been a slight gap in releases, my apologies. Now, I've had to work away from, away from home for two weeks so this has given me time to think about what I wanted to do next and I kind of came back with a short list of which the two top contenders was one a nomadic faction and the Slavs now as soon as I got back I wanted to play the Slavs because this came out just before I left I didn't really have any time to do any private play or anything with with the Slav culture pack and I kind of had a quick flip through the three factions and I got into something if you where the Antinians have got a very hard thing and I got a bit addicted and I spent the whole day playing the Antinians and I actually recorded five parts for that th faction so that's going to so what's actually resulted in is probably the best way to explain it is I've got the Antians on very hard I've got five parts recorded which I will release in fairly quick succession and but their chances of surviving to a full campaign is kind of going to be interesting is probably the polite word of saying so and then I thought well I want to run something alongside and I wanted to do a nomadic tribe so and I, I thought I don't really want to do the Huns because it's going to be in the same area as the Antians. So I've decided to do the White Hunts now for the you know, for a number of reasons. But before I get into those reasons, I'm just going to explain the principle. What I'm going to do is start two Let's Plays rather than one. That's the Antian one and the White Huns, and see which one survives. And if then if one of them gets destroyed the other one will go this doesn't mean I'm gonna let any of these die deliberately I'm gonna try and keep both of them going as long as possible so so why the white Huns now I, when I looked at the Huns the Huns is an interesting faction in the fact that they've got primary oh, well really complete cavalry armies that they are a cavalry horde but they're in Central Europe and I've done a lot of fighting in Europe and when I was looking at the unit roster for the White Huns, it's really interesting in the sense that they've got a mixture. They've got all most of the Hunnic, well, they've got all the Hunnic horse cavalry factions and stuff like that. And but they've also got some a number of unique units, which are slightly infantry based. These include some Eastern units like Sogdian warriors from the, the Sassanid Eastern cultures. Plus, they've got some. It's pretty interesting new unique unique units like the um, I think they called the Warriors of the Hindu Kush which is some pretty fierce max units so I think there's a nice mixture there and of course they've also got elephants so I think there's quite a nice mixture there to have some fun with some army builds plus they've got a ve an interesting start right out on the eastern border you can't go any further east on the map because the line coming down here is the border and so they kind of tuck there they're going to go straight in and against the Sassanids so this is it, we're going to play the White Huns. So let's get into it. Now the White Huns are a horde faction, so they won't be able to settle. And the faction leader is Kingla, Kingala, Gila. Um, it's probably a bit different. And then of course they've got the religion of Tengrenism, which means that they have an affinity, a cultural affinity with the Huns. So that could be quite fun, being, might be able to team up with the Huns and running across Europe, burning together. They've got the same cultural trait as the Huns, which is Scourge of God. They know nothing. Hell is the only word. The reality is much, much worse. And that means they have minus 10 morale, or they give the enemy minus 10 morale when fighting Christian factions. And then you've got this faction trait of Scourge of the East. They may be the most civilized of the kind, but remain savage, unforgiving opponents. So they get plus 100% income from sacking, looting and raiding. They get plus one integrity for every war being persecuted, prosecuted, prosecuted. Attrition immune to desert attrition, which is could be quite an interesting the uh, element in the fact that it may mean we may be able to expand out along 
through North Africa and then sweep up through Iberia into Europe that way. And then we've got morale plus 20 against the Eastern Empires. Now it'd be interesting to see whether that doubles up with the Christian trait here when fighting Eastern, um, Eastern Rome. Now one quick point about this, this is, this is, I'm starting this in February, or no, March 2016 for anyone who's watching this in the future, and recent patches have buffed up the economy for the Western and Eastern Roman Empire. So if you've watched campaigns in early 2015 when Attila first came out, you would have seen the Western Roman Empire collapse. Now the economy has been buffed up a bit, so they are expecting a bit more resistance coming through on, on from that point of view. Now, so it, this could be an interesting campaign. I'm going to play on very hard, purely and simply because to, f to give it an equal, this faction an equal chance to survive compared to the Antians, I think hard would, would make it fair. So we're going to start, we'll play this one on very hard. The victory objectives. I think they're quite fairly standard for com if you've watched the Hun campaigns. You've got to survive to a certain date, raise settlements, because of course this faction cannot settle. It's all based on hordes, following income, and what we're going to try and do is go for a divine triumph. So we have to survive to spring 450, defeat 40 factions, raise 70 settlements. That won't be a problem. Maintain 200 units. That means we're going to have to have 10 hordes, build a whole range of buildings and raise 30,000 by raiding so that's it there now what I'm going to do is start the campaign I won't show the entry video because there's nothing special about you that you represent the bold vanguard of the mighty Hephthalite Empire whilst your countrymen wage a fierce war against the Gupta Empire in the east your armies sweep westwards in a never ending search for new lands to conquer and new wealth to acquire to the south awaits the Sassanid Empire, backed by its numerous allies and puppets. Undoubtedly, your path towards the Persian heartland will be arduous, as this most fertile of regions will not be given up without a fight. However, tensions with the Eastern Roman Empire occupy the minds of the Sassanid rulers. Use this to your advantage and strike while their backs are turned. These lands are full of enemies. Go forth and vanquish them. Let all know the strength of the White Huns. There we are. Let all know the strength of the White Huns. So we start off on the eastern side. We're just going to have a look at that in a minute. And we've got the standard mission, survive until spring 400. Uh, gain 2000 gold now before I look at the factions which what I'm going to do is have a look at the overview map ah oh, here we are on the strategic overview map now as you can see the, the three heart hordes start right on the eastern side of the map and if I go for the diplomatic status you can see we're immediately at war with one two three four five six seven Eight, nine, ten uh, uh, Sassanids and their satrapies, and we've got the Afrigids up here who are an ally, so it won't be long before they declare war. So the thinking is that, that we're going to try and take out, we're going to take out Parthia, take out the Afrigids, create a kind of buffer area here to operate, because I, I would guess that what will happen is that we will get stacks coming up here and we can't go head to head so I think initially the battles will be up here and we'll try and weaken them then maybe come down and go for Abijar and Arya if too much comes up this way I will, what we'll probably do is go up around the top and come in Armenia so we'll pull the forces this way come go round and come up that way so that's going to be the strategy so let's get into it now we've got three, three hordes here, and I, I, will, I must admit that I've I have played a few turns of this just to get a feel of of the factions. So these opening Ready turns are there. So we've got this one here, defenders. Actually, let's do it the proper way. Um, so this is the family tree. Let's have a look at who, what traits we've got. 
steel, that's okay. Cunning plus one, that's a pretty good start. No nothing here. Uh, and so the bastard son is. Ah. So why is he in the air? Am I in the air? There's no point having uh, a six-year-old son here. I mean, he'd be the second heir, but I mean, he might as well gain the experience. So, see what this guy's like. He's got integrity. That's not brilliant, but that'd be useful because integrity is used to develop the hordes. And let's have a look at these guys. He's statement, he's got wealth. This guy's the... He's got integrity, which and he's my third general, so that's okay. Um, you've got research plus five percent, so that's okay. Let's have a look. You've got nothing. He needs to get married. Well, he was a dread rider, and well, you can't do anything. So there. I mean, of these campaigns. This game, this is different in the Hun one, you get this massive family, this is quite small because obviously it's not like raising armies and these guys there and hopefully we're not going to lose any hordes to... Um, how can you say? We're going to just raise that, we can upgrade this guy, I'm going to upgrade him but I'm not going to upgrade these units here because this is going to be my economic horde. I think this is the stronger, more developed compared to the the, these ones. And this guy, I think, he's actually has the capability. Yeah, he has bartering grounds, which allows him to create spies. And here's a little bit of a, a sneaky dodge: is to raise crew agents is we've got a spy master, an artisan, and an outrider. Um, well, I suppose you're going to be good. So what you can do is you can recruit this guy here. Now, what I want to do is move this guy. I can click on the horde. Oh, I'm clicking on the wrong one. Sorry, guys. There. And what I want to do is move this guy north to support that. Army up. there, and I'm going to let him in camp. And then, orders. what you can do then is, oops, I didn't mean to do that. And you're the other youngest one, and then you can get that. And so, so, you don't actually have to encamp to, to create units. So, that gives me a spy to push down this way, and a spy to keep an eye on these guys up here. So, and I think what we're going to do is go for our first orders. battle. Now, you can see we've got pretty good army here, we've got these guys here, these are the guardians of the Hindu Kush, yeah, um, this is some pretty awesome axe unit, but as you can see very expensive so I'm not sure I'm going to keep those. These guys are pretty good, you can see they've got good missile block, even though they've got poor armour, they've got this an anti-cavalry attack, and we've got these guys here, um, so what we're going to do is come down and attack Merv. I'm going to fight this battle, not one because it probably might be the only battle we have in this part and also I want to have a look at the units because I've my friend of mine has just upgraded their graphics card to a nice um, NVIDIA 980 with um, and what they've done is they've actually given me their old graphics card which isn't top range, I mean it's not perfect but it's better than the ones if any of you guys have watched my series before you've, you'd you have heard me talk about my very ancient graphics card and what that's actually done is the fact that I've, I've been able to increase the the graphics settings on Attila now, so so these guys now have got some nice textures so it's actually worth zooming in and looking at these guys and let's have a look at these art, these axemen so I've been doing this Let's get this, look at these guys. They've got some serious axe, axe work there. And these are the melee swordsmen. And these look pretty good. And then, of course, we've got these guys out front here, which are my exonic knight spearmen. So, 
And of course, what these guys have got is some a very nice gorilla acting. So I, I will be getting some of these because you can see here, they are, for this battle, they now can get them right up on the edge. And I think we'll just get these guys forward. Um, we've only got the three horse archers. Oops, stupid. Probably not going to use them so much in this battle because they're probably going to end up killing most of my troops. I think what we're going to do is let's have a look at the entrances. Swords can go in here. I think the, the these lancers can go in go in that entrance there. And I think what I'm going to do is this is a quite a familiar battle map. It was it came up used to come up quite a lot during the last Roman campaign as well. So I think that's it there. So I don't think I'm going to use the horse archers because they're probably going to kill my own troops. I'm going to get you guys moving in straight away. And I think we'll get these lancers coming in this way. They've actually deployed the cavalry up there which is interesting. I think we'll just leave that cavalry up there at the moment to keep that cavalry occupied. And let you guys stop for a while. You can you're gonna throw yep. And now you guys can We have gained the upper hand! Yep. against elephants. Break off, break off, break off. Actually pull through, pull through, pull through, pull through. Their tower has been destroyed! This bodes well! Um, I get these sword units here. Um, get you guys down. Chasing The enemy guys. have rallied their units! Away. I think. You can come up this way. That's quite a good strategy by the the AI by by Let's get these Warriors, up here. Guys are unbreakable. I mean, they're quite awesome units, actually, to be honest. Actually, I think one of you can come in from behind. I think the guys now can come back. We've got these guys engaged. Pretty much done these guys in. I mean, they're a pretty awesome unit. Um, I think you guys can now come in from behind. I think we've got them. Um, I think one of you can come back that way. You can keep chasing them that way. Even slowing up. I know I'm probably getting my other troops killed, but and 
Right, get you guys away from the tower. How pretty awesome that was. We probably took a few more casualties than we should have, but these axe units look at 115. I mean, they barely slowed up. Um, I say. So I may have to get rid of them because they're pretty expensive now, but yeah, I can guarantee that we're going to see some. Thirsty for battle! Gonna see some armies with at least a couple of those units in. Just gonna raise this. It's gonna be fun. So we've now got that's destroyed. Of course, I've got to wait for the. Got to remember to. Got some nice. I'm gonna need to rotate these guys round a bit. Just uh, I'm gonna get some campaign movement range because mobility is gonna be a key to this campaign. Gonna go for I'm gonna want to get down here to get some onagers it's relatively quickly, but I think I think we're gonna go with the civil. We're gonna maybe concentrate a little bit more on the civil side. So this guy can't build. You've got something here, let's have a quick look through. You've actually, you've got... Why have you got two cattle herders? Why do we need two cattle herders? I'm going to convert one of these. I think... Goat herder, food, 120 wealth. Shepherds, 200 wealth, 30 food. 15... 5 by local fertility. And get from the goat herders 15 per local fertility 55 I'm gonna go for a, a shepherd's hut here because we don't need two of these I don't I'm pretty sure we don't need that now we're gonna have now obviously because we're gonna be going through deserts there's no we're gonna need the low fertility buildings um, Thirsty for battle. I think this is no this is where's the military recruitment we got so maybe I think we're gonna get because <coughs> we're gonna need multiple military buildings here. I think the economy's okay. What do we go for? Economy, communal grounds. I must admit I haven't really looked at this. Yeah, so we got two economic industrial buildings here. So one of these will that will, once I've got the felt maker that will go up. This one. Yurt Builder, um, Elders Huts, what do we get from Elders Huts, Treasurer, Wealth 555 from Culture, 300, get Noble, Cartsy, Shamans of the Eternal Sky, gives us Priests, Shamans Huts, mm. part of me says let's go for that because we would get the extra recruitment capacity, I think we need to build this unit up. Got four Exolite Spears. I think we'll get just a couple of uh, horse archers. I'm not going to build this up. I think what I might do actually is get a, an extra spear unit. A couple of spear units and one horse archer for this horde. So it can defend itself against a reasonable attack but at the same time this is going to be my economic horde the blood riders I could rename them to the money makers or something like that Ready for action. and then the heir and the faction leader are going to be the main just going to end the turn they're going to be the main attacking force once I've got f enough for four hordes then they're going to pair up and operate as two separate attack units because the problem with this area is the regions are really big especially if we go north which is going to mean contentions going to be a bit of a problem the ancestors have oh, noticed that nice. our treasure stores are wanting will you help with this small matter 
Oh yeah, I'll go for that. Um. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. It saves him the trouble of having to get a wife and and I mean all right she doesn't give him any other bonuses but the chance of having children is, is going to be good I really like that plus that should mean that the Sabri are going to be very very friendly they're going to be happy and they might actually be able to give us a little bit of assistance now what I want to do is I'm a bit worried about these guys up here so what I'm going to do is going to be a bit, uh, I'm never too sure, I'm always a bit leery about, because of course you can only move three quarters of the way, and if you get that line isn't as precise as, um, I'm going to say I'm going to keep these two guys together just in case these come out and attack my economic horde, I'm going to i to just bring you north. I know there's going to be a, a little bit of contention. But I don't. I want to be far enough Next away from this guy that if he decides to yes. have a swipe at me, I can retreat. Yes. And because obviously this guy have needs to recruit my the battle axes. It sounds like a mother-in-law. Need good I I will resist the temptation to actually let's let's get another spear unit. Let's give me a bit more of a front line. He's got a good because they're fighting these type units. Oh, I can't see them, but they often have their own horse archers. So I think having a a bit more of a battle line here. I say we're still going to keep these guys for the moment. So yes, uh, I'm looking at the unit roster. The the archers are Thirsty in this. Yeah, you know, the missile units in this faction are aren't particularly brilliant. So what we've got here, we've got goat herders, we've got spinners, yurt got a cartwheel here that will probably I will probably convert that to a carpenter's yurt once I get it I think we're gonna go for food in this one to start with so we can get a bit of mixture of economy and cash running so I think that's all we can do this turn we've now got our spies out to see whether we've got any unpleasant visitors coming from the, from the top um, so we're off to a, a reasonable start. Um, maybe we should go north and take out the Affigids faster. But part of me still says Solanians power balanced. Grateful for your aid during recent political intrigue. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Has that always been there? Now, can we get? We can. You can hit. Warriors all. You can't. Ready for action. Yeah. I think what I'm going to do is come in here. None will escape. going to encircle for the moment and what I'm actually going to do is can he get close no, he's not going to get close enough to reinforce if he comes down there um, he's not going to I think again it's going to be contention but I don't think there's much I can do about this you're not going to reach. I think what I'm going to do is 
double time you down in to provide support because I want to knock these guys out as quickly as possible because I'm pretty sure that we're going to get assassinated That's units coming down here kill. and what I'm going to do is just auto, auto resolve this balanced I think one I don't want to fight another siege battle against an army because Maybe that wasn't quite such a, a bright idea. I'm going to sack this. Ready for action. Um, How can I raise. And that sees the end of Parthia. The reason I'm pushing for this is this now creates two desolate regions, which means that the Sassanids can't see where we are. And I know there's a risk in the sense that this army is exposed. And I think what I'm going to try and do is How can I, so I can put some hurt on this guy with a misdirect. Success. That means that will make it more difficult for them to come out and strike us. I'm going to go with... Is there any benefit? I'm not going to go to level 2. I, th I think... Cattle herd, felt maker. I'm going to go this way to, for nine turns to get a felt maker or cattle herd. Actually, no, let's, let's get a cattle herd first and then I'll come up here and then maybe come back and say we'll balance it. The initial target militarily is going to be the carpenter's yurt. Archery range, I presume an archery range will give me those archers. Footman's camp, which is a three. Um, the cura, wealth from commercial buildings, plus two percent from. So yeah, we're gonna go this way, then come back up that way, and I think that's what all we can do here. So let's have a quick look at here. Oh, we got. So we've got two shepherds' camps. We can upgrade. That's that's gonna take how's the integrity on this army? Minus two gonna have to watch that, but that could be due to contention. Um got plenty of food at the moment. So that gives us more horde growth. So I'm gonna go for a, a yurt builder just for the growth to start with. And then I can develop those. I can't do anything else about this area here, so characters unassigned yes. skills. So you're going to get you assassinate. Um, broken tig is all it needs. Target own army. I'm not sure the benefit of that. It's certainly going to improve the misdirect. Battle axes. We've got some traditions. Uh, antiquity when raiding. And. I think we'll go for those two just to open up that. We're certainly going to need to open this path up to get the extra integrity. And what I'm going to do now is probably pull the armies back a bit to take out the Afrigids because I don't want them behind us when it actually comes to attacking I think maybe I will attack first just to, to be the aggressor that's assuming that they don't declare war on me it's a little bit surprising um, I think we're let's bring you back about here Sword of my people your next command and you can encamp Ready Think. for action. You're just this side Tenry of the border, so you can come up here in a camp. You. How can I help? Do I take the risk? Yeah, I think I'm just going to Gods be praised. see if I can get these guys over the border. If they can't encamp, Your next no, bugger. 
but it will give us a chance to, to swoop in on these guys. I think we're going to yes. do another hinder so that these guys can't come round and have a go at my economic horde. So we've got success again. Yeah, so the only armies they can attack are those. I'm going to keep you down here. Oh, what's that? There is more I could do. The Great Wall of Persia. I don't remember that from my Sassanid campaign. Is that a new bat feature? Oh, interesting. Um, you can't move, so just. Sorry, there's like this element of. You, you need to so get get you some more troops. Get you some step mounted bows just because they're cheaper. You, you need to repair a bit. Sorry, I'm, I'm going to have to get rid of these guys. They're just so expensive for what they are. I mean, they're good. I, I mean, I won't deny it, but they're just. just you know, they're just too expensive for this part of the game, as I say. There will be armies in it, it'd be nice because I think they're going to be fantastic units. Especially when we're fighting something like the Western Romans. And when we're going up against some of their heavier spear units, having those guys to hack their way through the, um, you know, the, the contents of spears and stuff, the heavier um, Roman infantry, I think will be pretty good. I kind of quite like that. I think I think if we can knock out Kaith, How can now, I, help? I suppose the question is, Come, sit. if I stand Share these guys up, sixty million dollar question. He hasn't got anyone. Ready for action. Mercenaries. No, there's no onagers. So. You, I think what we're going to do is we're going to have to declare war. We want to trap this army in. So we declare war. We're going to come in and build a couple of bows and lay siege. And I think we're just going to move you up there. And I think what we can do now is. Just bring you round here so that there's no contention. You have more orders? You can you can see by getting rid of those axemen it's actually I am the light in the dark. Um, keeping us in the positive even though we've only got one horde For that's the doing it. Um, and we can do is have a look the at guards. the Action leader, you've got. So again, uh, what are we going to go for? Cattle herd. Um, seventy food, one twenty food. I think that could be quite useful because it will allow us to upgrade the cavalry. So we've got a goat herder, we have a cattle herder, and then this will come up to speed two, speed three, additional wealth. I think maybe we can afford to come this route here for you know have at least one cattle herder in here and we can actually get the extra uh, buffs for our cavalry so I think that's all we can do this turn got these guys under siege and this Kind of. I'm assuming that they're going to come through there, but am I putting all my eggs in one I basket? I think maybe we'll just have a kind of sneak across here. Right, I'm going to go for an end turn. Attack! General, I'm going to give you some zeal because that will give you. Oh, I thought zeal gave in. Oh, yeah, zeal gives integrity. So that's useful. Campaign movement range. 
So, I if the auto resolves good for this one, um, I will just auto resolve it. Uh, I don't particularly want to fight siege battle with one onaga. To be honest. So it looks like we're only going to have that very minor battle in the first part. So here we go, mercenary flock, mercenary contracts. Did I miss something there? Yeah, I'm going to auto resolve this guys just simply because it's going to go balanced. Pretty nice sword, this guy. Nice long, straight thrusting sword. I'm just going to sack it and raise it. That's nice. It's watching it render down in close up. It's the first time I've really got in close up for when it's actually done the business. Now this guy's. Ready for action. I think we're gonna, you know, yep, I can get you just across the border, the move, and we're gonna get you up here to finish off the Afrigids. I think maybe if I finish off the Afrigids in this part, then that's where I'm gonna end. Yes. Because I've fulfilled my initial objectives. The, obviously, these guys can't. Done. And this is one of the annoying things. You can't actually s stand this guy up. You're in, you're in Daristan. That's Kaith. So I, I think you can just sit down again. Uh, obviously, you can't do anything. We've got search here. Got the felt maker. I'm gonna go for that, guys. I, I know, and that fulfills that objective. And then we'll cancel down here. Uh, How can I, help? I think the assassins are a bit slow coming up here. I was expecting maybe they're just a bit slow off the mark. Let's have a quick look at diplomacy. If we can get my friend, be welcome. The ancestors um. smile upon you. No, nope, rejected. Oh well. Don't can't see why they can't. Ready for Wouldn't action. want a, a defensive One, military three. stroke military iron oh, thing, so we can go to a tier three sheep flock. So we got three cattle herd. Sire, we managed to get three food in this. Got two sheep camps. That a bit over the top, but then, given the arid nature of when we, when we come down through the Sassanid territories, uh, if I look at the fertility, oh, it's not going to show it, but. This is already poor, partly because I've raised it anyway. But that's a base fertility of two. That might be a bit better. But once I get we get down here, you can see this has got a base fertility of one. So maybe having a horde with three food buildings in it will be quite good. Um, this needs seven for the next level, but I think what can we get the most money from? That's not. I don't think. I don't think I really want that. That's will give me an extra ten food, an extra hundred and fifty wealth. So I think I'll go with that. Just to maybe take these to tier three, just to give us plenty of cash flowing in. And the side skill, Kingram, our faction leader, battle movement speed, ammunition, food for characters when in horde, commanded force. Zeal, if we get another zeal, that will 
think we'll go with the zeal there. What does authority give us? Morale, commander's unit. I think we'll go for campaign movement range. Let's say we'll, we'll finish off the Afghids and then that will be the end of this part. And then I think we're just going to have a period of consolidation. And we'll move the economic horde north. And then it's not there's less chance of it getting ambushed. As long as the Sabri kind of stay friends. Oh they're just raiding. Oh, so we've got an Imperium, so we've got two spies, two priests, two champions, we can have six halls, no fleets. Assassinate the following guy. So who are you? He's a So can I Yes. See if we can get an assassinate in. The ravens come. That might give us a bonus. A critical failure. Is that gonna be my spot? Oh no, he's just wounded. Oh well, we're just gonna have to I think we're what I'm going to do is attack him. That will draw the garrison out. Oh no, he's chased him off. That is impossible. Oh well. Lay siege to their hovels. Um, I should have attacked the settlement, shouldn't I? Bit of a cock up there, guys. Sorry. And we've lost a lancer. I should have. I shouldn't have auto resolved that, should I? It's gonna sack it. And Ready for action. Gonna raise it. Yeah, a little bit of a uh, a, co a cock up there, guys. But I think we can chase that guy down. In fact, the Sabies might finish them off for us. I don't know if they're at war with the Afghids. We can have a quick look. You actually are actually not at war with anyone. Oh, they've obviously made peace with. Yeah. Oh well. Right, so we've now got this force here, and what I want to do is. View this way. On our way, but that leaves you still in case. You have more um, I think what I can do here Ready for is bring you. I think you can afford to hang around here for the moment in Dethistan. Have to leave that agent there. I think we're going to have to have a little bit of rest and recuperation. Do you guys, you guys need some extra troops? You've got a little bit of cash to spend on. We got. F okay, and I, I quite like these guys. Um, LA attack, LA defense. Yeah, I'm going to get another one of these, and we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Horse archers, so um, these are about the only step mounted brigands. I think we're just gonna have to go with those. Of course, this guy's my faction leader, as I'm just going to retrain these guys back up, give them a bit more oomph. And Obviously, we're going to need to let this guy settle down, do some recovery, and retrain. So we've got Come full six. stack here. But needs a bit of TLC. Ready for we've got these guys here. Actually, what I could probably do is, uh, you know, you can't reach the faction leader. Maybe you can hand over some of the 
these some of these better units over because this guy doesn't really need a major force and that might actually save some cash so I'm gonna go for an end turn So that's a bit of a mess up. Letting that army get away. I should have attacked the settlement. <sighs> ah. Thank you. That was a really stupid thing to do. AI can be really dumb sometimes. Um, I think, well, there's no point sacking these guys. I think we're just going to raise. That's going to be the end of the Afghids. And we've got a bit of cash. I mean, that's what I should have done last time. Oh well. And did I see? Yep. Here comes the. How can I help? I think we're putting this direct on these guys. Good. Try and slow them up a bit. <laughs> Assassinate the following turns remaining. Mission aborted. Well, yeah, it's understandable. I've just um, been critical failure, so I've lost both my spies now. That's going to be a bit difficult. I think what I'm going to do, if this guy can't move. We've got a bit of cash, and I think if I stand him up, we're going to. Oh no! And what I'm going to do is get across here. And I think we're indulging a little bit of swapping. So I think you can come there. These guys, they've got a bit of rank, but they're damaged. And I think we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. I think we'll give them. Actually, we we'll give them the better ones. You can keep one horse archer. Um, in one of those. So you're going to give him three units back and you're going to get gain three so that will bring you up to 18 and then you can recruit the rest of your own troops and he can't actually now do anything so you can't do anything you're up to strength looking good and you guys are just bring you guys up. So, I think we've got a reasonably well-rounded army here, and I'm just going to go one more turn. I know I'm, I'm terrible for this, guys, and I apologise. Um, it's always for me. It's always one more turn. One more turn. Assassinated Huns. But I think do this turn and then that's the initial game objectives uh, fulfilled. But we've taken out Parthia, we've taken out the Asagids, whatever they're called. Yeah, I'm going to apologise for my pronunciations. Um, this guy, you've now got the damage unit, so I want you to come over here. And um, you can just camp. And you need to recover, so I want you still in this province. And you can encamp. And 
you coming south as quickly as possible. You can't reach this guy just yet. But I think what I'm going to do is For the pride. pull you back. Keep him in cave a little bit. And so you let you in camp. Is that so? And the strategy is going to be is to draw these guys north as individual armies, try and beat them up and kind of then swoop down probably through here after Herve and into there weaken the Assassinids by destroying these assassin these Satrapies down here. So we've now got the felt maker. I think it's now time to start coming down this route so we can have our own Onaga and that will actually strengthen these armies up. You've got a chance to make a bit more cash and what's the integrity here? Yeah, I mean you've topped out well out so I think we're going to have a felt maker for you because that's going to give us an extra 400. Felt makers are very very good building and then you've got another 6. If you get to a level 4 felt maker you can guess you can get 1600 for that. Can't do that here. Maybe we're Do we give this guy another horse archer? I mean he's not meant to be fighting a battle. Charles his integrity not brilliant, but there's not much we can do about it. <coughs> I think we'll just give him one unit. I don't want him too, I don't want him too weak. And that's where I'm going to leave it, guys. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. We've got these guys coming down. They, they're here, but I don't think they're actually at war with the Sabir. Oh no, they're back at war. Was, was I suffering delusions last time? Um. They suddenly declared war on the. I don't know. Magyars are improving. I don't know. Or oh, maybe I clicked on the Magyars by mistake. Well, they're right over there, but I think these guys. Having those on side and helping us, being friendly. They're at war with Assassinids, so they've actually we've now got an ally here as well, which is going to be quite useful. Actually, can I move this guy? I must have I'll actually cancel that. Yeah, I must have moved him. Sorry that about that guys. A bit of self doubt coming in there. And this is where I'm going to leave it, guys. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. I've probably rambled on a lot longer than that than I should have, but this is probably the first kind of good episode we've got going, and as I said, how long these campaigns will run will depend very much on the, I don't know why that's saying Hunnic Horse Archer, um, it gets stuck from time to time, I don't know why, yep. Um, which one of these campaigns goes to full length, either this or the Antians, will depend on who survives. Although, if I was bet a betting person, which I'm not, uh, my money would be on the White Huns. If you watch my Antian campaign, you will understand that. In the fact that they are in a, even just the Antians in a pretty precarious position. Anyway, I shouldn't be rambling on that. So, hope you enjoyed the episode and hope you above all things enjoy your gaming